All right, everybody. Hey, Ellen. Welcome to today's episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching today. My name is Jesse, and as always, I'm the host here on this channel. If you haven't yet already, and you like things pertaining to Norse heathenry or you know Norse heathenly heathenry related subjects, uh, I encourage you to check out all the previous loaded content that I've uploaded here on the channel. You can go down and check out the playlist section of the channel. There's a bunch of things that I uh, kind of categorize. And uh, for instance, today is going to be a, a continuation of a series type of thing. Uh, this is the Nine Pieces of Eight series, and today is episode seven. Uh, so anything that you're interested in as far as Norse heathenry and Norse heathenry related stuff, uh, please check out what I've uploaded thus far. And if you do like it, I encourage you to please give me the thumbs up on the videos. And if you don't like it, that's okay. Give me a thumbs down. Give me some constructive feedback in the comment section down below. And uh, if you want to continue seeing more stuff from me, uh, please subscribe to the channel. It's going to be right down here. All right. And if you don't want to miss anything, click the bell for notifications and you'll be notified every time I upload new content. So today is, again, like I said, episode seven of the Nine Pieces of Eight series. The Nine Pieces of Eight series has been something that I've been running now consecutively for the last six weeks, today being the seventh. And uh, it is a rune discussion or rune study, sort of scratching of the surface type thing. Uh, before we get started, I always like to light a little bit of incense and a candle just to kind of get things in the mood. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that. And then we will go ahead and continue with the topic of discussions for today. So today's runes, uh, I've been doing a three rune a episode, three rune per episode uh, discussion. And uh, today's runes will be Suwilu, Tiwas, and Berkano, okay? All right, so now that we've got all that fun stuff taken care of and out of the way, um, Cool thing about today's episode is as as we've kind of progressed through the uh, the Elder Fudark runes, um, we're obviously transitioning from one set of it into another set of it. Um, the first set of eight. Um, well, there, there, there's so when we say it, we're not talking about literally eight runes, but it does so happen to mean that there are eight runes in each set of it, right? You know, so um, in the first set you have Freya's it. In the second set, you have Heimdall's et, and in the next set, or the final set, you have uh, Tears et. Um, and they all mean different things. There's going to be some annotated cards that you can check out throughout the video, as well as in the end screen, to kind of kind of catch you up a little bit about what I see uh, the meanings of each runes are. But today's runes will be Soilu, Tiwas, and Burkano, which is going to end the Heimdall's et and start into the uh, Tears et. Um, another little disclaimer that I always like to, to leave here for those that are watching this is that this is by no means canon um, or, or, you know, solid proof of the meaning of the runes. A lot of what I'm speaking about in this series are things that I have become familiar with in terms of the meanings of each rune in the Elder Fudark set. Um, there's a lot of stuff containing uh, historical, you, you know, linguistic stuff for the runes that we're not going to really be going into um, in this particular discussion. There's a lot more information out there, a couple other channels that I will maybe try to link up in some cards for you guys to check out if that is your angle, if you're looking into, you know, expand your knowledge of the linguistics part of the uh, Elder Food Art. All right, they are the Proto-Germanic set of uh, phenoms, uh, letters, if you will. Uh, used to speak in Proto-Germanic, they are not used to speak in Old Norse, Anglo-Saxon, Modern English, or anything like that, although a lot of people like to use them for that. That is not their correct uh, application as far as from, from a linguistic standpoint. They were used to, to, to document or write in Proto-Germanic, which predates Old Norse. But anyways, enough of that. Um, there's more stuff out there that you can check out in greater detail with some of the cards that I'll be linking in the, uh, the videos that you'll see pop up here in annotated cards. So, first of all, um, the end of Freya's It is this rune, for the folks watching on uh, Facebook, is Sowilu. 
and then for the face or for the YouTube folks here, Soilu does represent the S sound as in um, something or sun, for instance, uh, and it does represent or look similar to the Latin S uh, character letter, um, and it does mean uh, the sun. Okay, soul is uh, an, an ancient word for the sun, and um, it's esoteric meanings, you know, um, do tend to reflect that of wholeness, uh, success, um, guidance, goal settings, um, victory, that sort of thing. Uh, there's a brightness, there's, there's a welcomingness, there's, you know, all that sort of thing. It teaches us to sort of keep a, um, a confidence in our projects and in our quest. It, it illuminates, it, it gives life, it gives light, and, um, it kind of guides and, and, and gives that sort of promise to, to better days, you know? It's a, kind of like the light at the end of the tunnel is, is, is almost the way that I see the, uh, the, the, the esoteric or spiritual meaning for Sobilo to, to represent. Um, the other thing that I would also like to kind of point out or notice, at least from my workings with Sobilo as a rune and rune castings and whatnot, is... Um, is that like the sun, you know, the sun rises, you know, it, it has its different points of the day where it's at its weakest or at its strength and at its, you know, setting, okay? Um, it kind of reminds us that there is a time and uh, point in things that we need to kind of stop, you know? It, it, it lets us know when we're, we're to stop because just like the sun cycle of rising and falling is the same every day. Um, know where your strengths are. Know where the where the strength is that you need to apply, so to speak. Um, so it's 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 almost like a warning in a sense of just you know realize that just because it's bright, just because it's strong, there are times when it is dark, and there are times when that that light is is not present. Um, it's always there, you know, kind of in the background, um, but it's never always visible. Uh, for our for our naked eye to see, um, so that is definitely one thing that I would like to kind of point out with my own approach to the usings and, and the workings of Sowilu. Um, and as always, I encourage people as we go along to you know if you're watching live on Facebook, leave your comments down below, and if you're watching up here on the channel, drop them down in the comments because I want to see and hear what everybody else has to say about their own workings with the runes. All right. So then our next rune for discussion today starts the uh, Tears It of the Elder Futhark set. And it is one of my favorite runes. I think it's a lot of favorite runes for, uh, or a favorite rune for a lot of heathens out here. And that is the Tiwaz rune. And it starts Tears It, and it is Tears rune. Um, I've done a deity discussion on Tear which I will link up in here, uh, the top right corner of an annotated card. You can kind of see what we are talking about when we talk about Tyr. Uh, but for those watching on Facebook and for those watching on YouTube, it looks very similar to the shape of an arrow or spearhead, right? And it is literally the rune to sig signify the, uh, the god Tyr, okay? Uh, it represents uh, things connected with justice and uh, self-sacrifice, right order, right action, okay? Um, balance, if you will. Um, sort of the things that need to happen to uh, equal out a, the, the good for the society. Whether it means sacrificing oneself or part of oneself so that way... The, the tribe or the society at large benefits from that action. It is right action. It is not, uh, you know, biased in any way. It doesn't lean in its uh, preference to a person or, or an action or a thing. It is the right action. So whether or not it favors you specifically or whether it favors something else or someone else, it is the right equal action that what true justice should, uh, should represent, right? Um, we, we, we look to tear oftentimes in, in this path and in this, this approach to, um, you know, heathenry as a figure who took the opportunity to give of himself, to sacrifice of himself, and 
that action benefited the tribe, his tribe, at large. You know, so there's a definite essence of self-sacrifice. There's a definite essence of giving of yourself and being selfless in your actions for the well-being of the whole community. You know, um, the, the one or ones, uh, an individual who looks for success, the, the, the person who looks to try and be successful in things will have to quite often learn and know that there is sacrifice that needs to happen. There is things that need to be given up. There are things that, you know, commodities, comforts of life, uh, parts of yourself that you don't necessarily want to part with um, in order to benefit not just yourself, but everyone around you, everybody within your Ilungar, everybody within your tribe, um, that sacrifice must be made. There's a reason or a lesson to be learned in that action, you know. Um, the shape of an arrow or, or the spearhead, you know, that, that pointed, sort of poignant symbol. Um, something is on target. There, there's something specific to focus on and there's a, there's a need to focus on that. Um, positive regulation, things that you need to pinpoint, right? Um, it is one of my favorite runes, and I think it's a lot of uh, Heathen's favorite runes as well for the meanings behind it. Um, so there's that. Now the final rune for today is uh, Bercano, okay? And Bercano represents the B, B sound, right? As in bark or uh, birch. Um, and as I say, birch, that is the, 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 the meaning of this rune, in that it is uh, bircon, I think it's a, an old English word for birch, um, but it represents the, you know, the, the, the esoteric or spiritual essences from what I've worked in, uh, the, the, the meanings of this rune is that of the, you know, motherly protection, uh, birthing, sanctuary, uh, a little bit of secrecy as well. We'll talk a little bit about that here in just a moment. Um, but it, it is a rune of continual growth, sort of a cyclic, you know, kind of like the, gest the gestation period um, uh, sort of thing. Uh, the renewal, you know, because it, it's interesting. I think the birch is, is one of those trees that looks the way it looks year-round. Its, bar its bark does not change. It, it's, it's one of those uh, trees that has that life regardless of the seasons but there's definitely it's one of the newest uh trees that, that that shows life in the spring when it has its leaves and stuff comes forth so you have this whole uh nature of becoming newness um fertility okay um it, it can signal quite often the new beginnings right um and, and, and this is an interesting thing, too, is, is, is one of the things that I've kind of become aware of. Uh, it's almost like a figure eight or 18, if you will. You have a one right here, uh, kind of on this side. You have what seems to look like an eight up here. So you have 18, which is a multiple of nine, right? Nine being a sacred number uh, for Norse Germanic paganism and Norse heathenry. Um, it is the double of nine. Um, and so it is the symbol of fulfillment, you know, um, your, your patience, your, your, your waiting, your time that you're taking to allow things to grow has come to its fulfillment. It is at its full gestation, um, and you are able to allow the newness to start growing. We're going to be touching upon the next progress of things in the order of the runes next week um but but this rune sort of is the second rune in tears eight and it, and it begins that like i said that that symbol of fulfillment that 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 essence of growth is ready to start okay the the nurture the secrecy what, what, what i mentioned before about how Burkano can can be that of secrecy you know a lot of times folks want to say that you know to, to be secretive to be um, to have secrets is, is, a, is a bad thing, and it's not necessarily so, um, at least in the sense of protection. You know, there, there are sometimes things that are withheld, there are sometimes things that are protected, um, 
and, and, and there's that level of secrecy, um, but that, that is sometimes needed for the protection, for the overall growth of things to happen in our community um, as a team and as an overall collective, which again, we'll be talking about in the next room come next week, all right? So that is today's discussion for the uh, first, well, the last set, the last rune in uh, Heimdall's Ed and the first two runes in Tears Ed. And I encourage everyone who's watched thus far to please comment down below and tell me what you think. If you uh, have your own personal dealings with the runes that you want to kind of add and offer in a discussion, drop it down here in the comments and let me know what you guys think. Uh, and again, tune in every week. Uh, after this, we've got two more episodes to go. I will be going into some things that I want to kind of touch on a little bit as far as how I do, you know, workings with the runes, um, just to kind of let you guys know, like, hey, this is what I do. You can, you know, how, how you do it is up to you. Um, but just to kind of give you a little bit of an insight of, of what it is that I do. So um, I appreciate everyone's participation, watching these videos, commenting, subscribing, liking, all that fun stuff. If you haven't yet, and you want to see more stuff, as I mentioned earlier in the video, please, when you like the videos, when you comment on the videos, when you subscribe, all of that helps. Uh, if, if you're into this sort of thing, and if you want to see more videos related to heathenry, all that stuff helps the YouTube algorithm get more content you know, out into your eyes and into your view. So uh, I do appreciate everyone's participation. Thank you so much today for watching. Everyone that's watching live on Facebook, don't go anywhere because I want to see what your comments are and have a little bit of dialogue with everybody. Um, and as a reminder for those that are watching on YouTube, if you want to be a part of the Facebook live streams every Sunday at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time in the evening, just go down into the description. You'll see all the uh, links for the page and everything that you can do to support Midgard Musings. would love to have you a part of the dialogue and uh, looking forward to seeing some new familiar new faces. Uh, be reintroduced with familiar faces, all that kind of fun stuff. So thank you all again so much for watching. Hail, and I will see you all in next week's video. Hey.